Hey everyone, it's Matt C, uh, and you're tuned into another uh, uh, Driven Stories. I almost said um, the other thing I do, <laughs> drive time update. And we don't quite have that yet, but we might have it very soon because uh, today I'm supposed to be getting a hard proof from the printer on what the uh, the book's looking like. So about binding, about... Uh, you know, making sure that all the pages aren't out of order and that sort of thing. And then we have one more PDF I got to send to the printer, and then we'll uh, and then we'll be uh, we'll be cooking. I guess it'll just be a matter of um, just waiting a few weeks to actually get the thing printed finally. So, yeah, that's exciting. And um, but this is um, a driven stories update. And as far as stories go. <laughs> So I'm going, I was debating this morning about whether or not to even bring this up, but I'm going through Ho uh, Homelander, um, uh, the boys, and I think I'm going to stop. <laughs> Just, I've seen like six episodes. I, I Like hearing spoilers never, you know, usually like spoilers make me want to watch a show more. I'm like, oh, wow, that's an interesting reveal. I'd like to see how they uh, flush that out. Uh, none of none of the spoilers for the show before I started it made me think like, Oh man, like I really want to see that happen because I think the show is just a series of events that you've never seen before on television, uh, taking place more extremely than you've ever thought they could get away with on television <laughs> and somehow making it, you know, gross and funny. It's, um, yeah, I don't know. I kept holding out because it's it's well written, and we'll get more into this with dialogue um, driven stories updates. Like I can see, like they're hitting the marks that I know and understand about how you uh, kind of leave like a hook at the beginning of you know like oh this, they use some weird noun like uh, uh, let's talk about um, how we want something from each other and then one of us is going to drop some obscure uh, scotch reference right and they do that so that at the very end of the scene the last dialogue moment uh, one of the characters can reference that again and then tie it into the uh, the philosophical themes that they were combating about right that's that's a classic well-trodden um, skill that uh, storytellers need to have if they want to take a screenwriting approach to their stories um, and they do it in almost every scene which is nice I like to see that sort of stuff the more the better because I like to see it happen in more and more ways <clears throat> and it kind of drills it into my my mind about how to handle those sort of things effectively so I was I was kind of you know a lot of these stories I just kind of sit and um, study as a student but um, <clears throat> yeah um, the, one other thing about this show that a lot of people do, and I guess is pretty satisfying in a way, it feels um, pretty like an advanced sort of thing to do, is to have villains who slowly you get to understand better, you get more backstory to, to make you uh, appreciate what they've gone through to humanize them. And that's, you know, that's... um. I mean that's just called professionalism I think at this in this day and age I don't think you can really I don't think you'd get a script sold if you weren't um, doing that and you also need um, conversely you need your uh, protagonists to slowly uh, reveal their flaws right they need to be sold on who the like you gotta sell like really quickly uh, first act of the first episode uh, who the villain and who the protagonists are. And then by the end, you need to, or mm, by the second act, you need to sell of, um, and the second act of the whole series, right? Anyway, I'm getting so much into this. Is this just going to become a review of that show? I don't, mm. <laughs> let's, let's not. Um, <clears throat> there's a better, uh, well, this isn't better, but there's, there's a pretty advanced technique if you want to really flesh out protagonists and antagonists, there's a pretty advanced technique you can do, and that's called the double reversal. That's that's what this episode should be titled. Hopefully I didn't end up just titling it. Uh, let's talk about Homelander for 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, 
okay, focusing. So double reversal, what is that? Um, a double reversal is when uh, you've got uh, both the protagonist and the antagonist, and hero, or hero and villain, if you go that far with how you characterize them, um, both experiencing revelations by the story's end. Uh, so, so that means um, both the protagonist and antagonist need uh, weaknesses, uh, need a weakness and a need, right? So they're broken in some way with their weakness. They need to get that resolved. And if they don't get it resolved, they're going to continue, as you see at the beginning, they're going to continue hurting themselves and others because they're, there's discord between them and the world, right? That's kind of how you define it. Uh, so, and they don't ha have the same ones. They rarely have the same weaknesses and needs, the protagonist and the antagonist, but they need to have them. And uh, so they, they both have to be capable of learning. The villain needs to be capable of growth, right? So that that's the uh, step one of just professionalism, right? Um, making your, uh, your villains relatable, understandable, uh, you're able to have empathy with them because of their backstory and the challenges that they faced, even though they've made uh, poor decisions. You can understand uh, the perspective in making those decisions, right? Uh, that's that's basic stuff, but uh, that needs to be in the double reversal. That's got to be baked in. They also need. Um, I got notes here. <laughs> Sometimes I don't have notes, but this time I have notes. Um, so like you know, the final battle of the third act, like they need to, to be able to, um, have that self revelation, right. They need to both, um, do that. And, and this is what's cool. This is how you tie it together. So it's not just two stories that you've mashed together. The opponent, uh, hmm, the opponent, the protagonist needs to learn something about themselves from the protagonist. Did I say that right? The hero needs to learn from the villain. The villain needs to learn from the hero, right? That, that's going to be key to them getting their uh, weakness addressed and their need um, need addressed. <laughs> um, and uh, so, th so basically they need to connect. Even though they're going to be different self-revelations, they need to connect. And then lastly, um, so the vision that you have, the moral vision, which is just kind of a way of saying... You know, like, how do you, would you like to see people deal with their problems? And how, how would you like, what's satisfying to you about seeing people um, get fixed, right? That's your moral vision. Uh, that needs to be something that's, that's going to be the, uh, the, more than, I guess, like the sum of the parts of both self-revelations from both the protagonist and the antagonist, if that makes sense. So that's basically how that works. Those are the key uh, steps to making a double reversal work. What's an example of that? Uh, Star Wars. <laughs> I bring up Star Wars a lot because people, even if you haven't seen it, you understand the basic plot points. And um, yeah, and it's obviously following some kind of classic tropes that we kind of talk about in this uh, on this channel. Um, Darth Vader, right? Uh, he's, he's, he's more of a, uh, mm, yeah, like he's an interesting kind of fleshy bad guy, but he's not, um, it takes, you know, really watching Empire Strikes Back to get a sense of a hint of a double reversal coming. Uh, it gets to that basic point where you're really starting to understand that he has motivations uh, he can't kill his son, and uh, his son can't really, like, well, he wants to kill. He he, he physically can't kill. The Force, uh, he's not good enough. Like, even if he wants to kill his father, he can't. And once he realizes it's his father, Darth Vader's his father, he can't really, um... Uh, he'd rather, well, nah, hmm. Let's just say by Return of the Jedi, he's uh, uh, his moral vision, like his self-revelation is uh, the only way I can overcome hate with love, which is what um, sounds kind of cheesy, but it's kind of what it's what um, 
he was taught by Obi-Wan and Yoda. The only way I can overcome hate isn't by killing my father, but giving up my life for my father, who's a bad man, but I still see the redeeming qualities in him. This is Luke speaking, not me. Um, I still see that there's good in him. Uh, that there's something worth saving, even if the whole galaxy doesn't see it. Even if he's a mass murderer and a psychopath, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna die to save him. <clears throat> and then, um, similarly, they they both have similar um, self revelations. Uh, the only way I can uh, protect and care about those that I whom I love. Um, is that word you used? Who? Who? I don't know. Um, the only way I can uh, protect them is to give my life to save them. Uh, I can't um, try to manipulate the situation with anger to uh, force them to kind of rule the galaxy with me. I have to give up my life to save them. And one of them dies. <laughs> Spoiler alert. And one of them, in a way, dies uh, because he becomes a complete uh, his his imperfect old man finally falls away and he becomes the complete hero because his needs both of their needs are completely addressed um, that's kind of my sort of the emotional summary of uh, Star Wars the original trilogy at least and uh, yeah with some prequel stuff thrown in but yeah, so that's that's um, that's a double reversal. It's a it's an advanced technique. It's tough to do. It's tough to pull off. I'm doing. Uh, mm, I'm I'm using uh, elements of this. There's some interesting stuff in Curie that's happening. Let's just say that. Um, there's a lot of ways. You you notice I was trying to say protagonist and antagonist because there's a lot of dimensions to this. This isn't just like a hero's journey kind of thing. Um, I'd say every romantic comedy you've ever seen has a double reversal because the antagonist, the protagonist is the main character who's trying to get the other one to fall in love with them or whatever, right? There's always going to be one who's slightly more of the dominant main character, the central main character, right? And the um, the, pro the antagonist is just the other character who's also falling in love, right? So obviously they both fall in love with each other at the end. It's not just a one-way street, and so that means they both have to have self-revelations because the um, that revelation is going to be tied to them realizing they love each other, right? There's a lot of ways you can you can play this out. So it's not just about hero versus villain. Um, you can do this with. Hopefully, you do do this with all your protagonists in a way. They all need to to be dimensions of different dimensions of the moral vision that you have. And so they're all going to be going through these sort of things. They're all going to be experiencing self-revelation and they all are going to um, uh, get their weaknesses and needs addressed. Basically, what I'm, what I'm saying is you apply the hero's kind of emotional journey to the, the villain, but um, you're going to be doing that with all of your protagonists. And so they're all going to learn from each other. They're all going to receive part of their self-revelation from each other uh, that's what makes a good team work in a protagonist team story and uh, the uh, the moral vision the kind of the thing that you want to say the solution that you're offering by the story's in is is uh, the, the sum of all of what you're doing so but yeah all that to say I'm doing it in Kyrie but it's not just because I'm not just like a Darth Vader Luke sort of thing there's a lot of ways you can apply this. So think about how you can do this with your stories. It's um, it's a pretty fun technique, as you can see. Like it's it's my favorite thing about uh, the original trilogy, Star Wars, and um, it's, it's something that's impacted a lot of people. It's not just kind of like a namby pamby kind of <laughs> thing. Just a thing that you can do just to do it, which is which is kind of. Um, if I had to, if I was going to make reviews, I, I, w I would make reviews of things that I watch, but I think a lot of the things I watch, no one cares about. And a lot of the things that I watch that people do care about, I would have a, a uh, unpopular take on them. So that for just, just, just to solidify that. So that no one asked me to do those sort of things. My, my, um, my review, you've just heard my review of, um, 
I, I keep wanting to call it Homelander because I'm thinking about that show Homeland um, that was popular that I didn't care to watch. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I would just say it's a it's show it's a show doing things because it can with some good writing uh, put on top. That's just kind of what it is, which is fine. Um, I'm glad if you liked it. Um, don't please don't dox me because I didn't like it. Anyway, that's the Driven Stories update for today. I tried to do this two days ago, and then I deleted the audio file. And I tried to do it yesterday, and I think I was just kind of bloated and tired, and uh, it didn't even work. It was just phasing out. I just had to end it. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just, you know when you have it, and you know when you don't. So that's that's the video for today. Um, I'm going to be making more of these. I did a Twitter kind of thing. And I got um, like a poll sort of thing. And this is the number one thing people want, which is great because this is the number one sort of thing that I want to do. So I'll be doing more of these. Uh, so keep uh, tuning in. Please subscribe and I'll uh, get more of them to you. Thanks. Bye.